Hi everyone, uh, my name is Raghu Srinivasan. I'm an assistant professor in the mechanical engineering uh, department. Today we are in the materials testing lab and we're going to talk about like testing materials for its behavior. Uh, before I start, you, uh, you guys probably know the elastic material and a plastic material is, right? So an example of an elastic material is an elastic band or a rubber band. So the, uh, what it, how it works is it's basically an elastic material where we apply a force, it extends to a different shape. When the force has been released, it gets back to its original shape. So that's an elastic material. An example of a plastic material is something that's made out of plastic. So here we have a, like a plastic paper. And when I, I put a pressure through it, you can see it changes shape. It keeps changing shape and then it finally is going to break into two pieces like this. This is a plastic material, right? Uh, believe it or not, all materials go through these phenomenon. So elastic and plastic is more like a material's behavior rather than you name the material like this. So if you take a look at this elastic band or this plastic paper, they're both organic materials made out of like hydrocarbons, polymer chains, and all those things. But we call this as an elastic band, we call this as a plastic because of its behavior rather than like what it's made out of. And all materials, like even metals, go through these process, probably you don't see it. So if you take a piece of metal here, so this is made out of uh, carbon steel alloy, this also goes through elastic deformation. You're probably not going to see it. Uh, the force is going to be really small. It's still going to behave like that elastic band and you're not going to see it, right? And then eventually when the force is uh, large enough, it's just going to break it into two pieces. And that comes to the next uh, section where we're going to talk about these materials. Uh, either the material behaves in a ductile manner or in a brittle manner. So the difference between ductile and brittle is when you call a material ductile, it goes through this enormous plastic deformation, meaning that it changes its original shape similar to this it's very ductile and then it finally breaks into two pieces and when it finally breaks into two pieces if you put together it's not going to come back to its original shape like this so that's a ductile material when we talk about brittle material which is almost like this chart piece here okay this is brittle meaning that like with less force i can break it into two pieces it's very brittle and when i put it together you're pretty much going to get into the same shape so all materials are like most materials behave either ductile or brittle. Okay, here's a piece of this uh, glass here. So glass or brittle materials. To break it into two pieces, I can't just break it like how I did with uh, a chalk piece. I can make a little uh, crack or a notch here. So you can see here. And then if I put pressure through it, it's going to break it into two pieces. It's very similar to the chalk piece that we saw. So this is a brittle material. When I put it together, it's going to come back to its original shape or like original length that we had before. I can actually demonstrate this with a piece of paper here. So if you have a long piece of paper and I'm trying to rip it into two pieces, it's really hard to do it. When I put the force through the paper, all the forces go through the paper like that. So now what I'm going to do is like how I put a little notch in that uh, glass piece. I'm going to put a little notch here. There you go. So that's the little notch. Now if I apply the same force, the force that goes through this uh, uh, hole here is going to go across and then it's going to concentrate on the edges. Now I can rip this into two easily like that, right? That's the same concept that we're going to do with a big metal piece. So we take a metal piece like this. This is actually carbon steel and we put, there is a notch uh, maker there and then we put a little notch in here like the same way we put the crack in and then Obviously I can't do it, I'm not strong enough, I'm not a Hulk. Uh, but what we're gonna do is like with this notch and with this sample, we're gonna use that uh, machine over there and I'll talk about this in a, in a minute, how that works. And we're gonna do, we're gonna test this, okay? So why we're trying to test this here is these carbon steel, uh, they're very notorious for changing from being ductile to brittle based on the temperature, as a function of temperature, all right? So these materials are gonna behave like a ductile material if you do it in room temperature and you build your ship or your infrastructure, your bridges, and then you send it out to the real world. When the temperature goes down, it changes from being ductile to brittle, okay? So that's what we are pretty much going to do with that equipment over there. So we're going to make samples like this with a notch here, and then we're going to just uh, 
put it in that experiment and then we're gonna see like how much energy it requires to break this into two pieces. This is the choppy test, which has this uh, hammer on the top, the anvil on the top, and uh, it's actually locked in now. So once I release it, this is gonna freely swing. So when it's gonna freely swing, this is almost like a pendulum, right? So without the sample in place here, when I release it, it's gonna swing to its full potential up here and then it's gonna go back. So that's when we calibrate it to zero. Now what we do is in the next set, uh, we're gonna clock it back again and then we're gonna keep the metal specimen in there with a notch and then now we're gonna release it. So when we release it, the hammer is gonna come down again hit the sample, break the sample into pieces, and then it's gonna to come to another height here, which is not gonna be the same height without the sample. So you have a change in height. And then with that change in height, what we can calculate is the mass of the anvil, the acceleration due to gravity G times the difference in height is gonna give you the amount of energy it takes to break this sample. All right, so when you have a ductile sample which goes through a lot of plastic deformation before it breaks into two pieces, it's gonna absorb a lot of energy, all right? Now what we can do is take the same metal piece sample, another metal piece, uh, sample with the same alloy, uh, make a notch, and then you can put it into uh, an ice bath and then keep the temperature low, and then you can immediately put it back into the slot re-zero it and then release the hammer again. Now it's gonna come down and hit it. And what we can see is the sample is gonna break, but now it's gonna break in a different manner. From being ductile, it's kind of probably gonna change into brittle. When the specimen is brittle, when it's at a cold temperature, this is almost like the chalk piece or the glass piece. So it's not gonna take a lot of energy to break this. So now the energy that it's gonna absorb is very less compared to the same material at room temperature, which is gonna absorb more energy. So now what we can do is we can plot this graph where we can actually take the amount of energy it takes to break the sample as a function of temperature. So that gives us an idea how those materials behave in different temperatures. So now, uh, without the sample, I'm gonna release it. I can, can see the hammer is gonna swing back and forth. So now you can see the software over there. So that kind of zeroes it. So that's the height at which it's gonna go. And in the next couple of rounds, we're going to put the samples, one at room temperature, one at cold temperature, and then finally we'll see how the surface looks like. That's our carbon steel alloy, and that is at room temperature. And I'm going to pull the trigger and you can see how that's going to uh, go into pieces and how much energy it requires to break it into two pieces. We are placing our metal samples inside this dry ice and right now the temperature is like negative 67 degrees Celsius. Now we have to quickly transfer this sample to the uh, anvil over there and then we can pull the plug and release the hammer and see how that works. <coughs> So this is the third set we're gonna do. And in this case, like rather than using carbon steel in two different temperatures, we're gonna use aluminum, which is a softer material, and we're just gonna do it at room temperature and see how it's gonna behave. All right, so here are the specimens after we dropped the hammer on them and then broken into two pieces. Uh, so this is the carbon steel at negative 74 degrees Celsius, and this is the same carbon steel at room temperature, and that's the same carbon steel uh, at 95 degrees Celsius. So as the temperature went down, you can see the surface in which it got broken up. So the, this is the, the broken surface or the fractured surface. So this is more ductile. You can see there's like, it's not a clean cut and you can see uh, it, it's getting more duct or less ductile and finally it became into a brittle material. So this is almost like pulling these plastic paper. So you can see a lot of energy went into it, like 100 joules, 83 joules. But as you reduce the temperature, it went down to like what, four joules and it almost gotten into a clean cut like a brittle material, which is very similar to how we broke our um, chalk piece before. And we also tested a different material, aluminum, to see how that works. Aluminum is a softer material and it's a lot more ductile than the steel. And you can see how the fracture surface looks for aluminum here. 
and this is very relatable to here in Alaska so if you look at your trash cans uh, you keep it out in the summer you keep it out in the winter based on the temperature you can see like sometimes the trash can kind of like pops out because of the temperature lower temperature it becomes brutal it, it, it kind of becomes brutal at that point so it's kind of like a nice uh, experiment to take a look at it here in Alaska and, and appreciate the effect of temperature on materials.